Thanks for checking in at Calamo. We're here in uh, Virginia. It's a beautiful day, maybe a little windy, but it's a beautiful day, sunny. You can tell the sun. And I'm super excited about our sermon series uh, this, uh, this well, this week. Uh, it's the words of life. And, and, and today we're gonna be thinking about how partnerships and relationships relate to faithfulness and, and what we can learn from that. There are so many things going on today that that our relationships are really central to everything that we are and everything that we can enjoy in our, in our lives. And we do have our Lord and Savior Jesus who loves us and, and desires to be in that intimate relationship with us. And we do have the constant presence of the Holy Companion to be with us. So our opening, our message today is, are you a good partner? And you can say, huh? Partner? Partner in what? Well, there's marital partners, there's clubs, there's social partners. Um, we're a partner in, uh, in citizenship in our country. We have uh, partnerships, if you will, with our friends, our church, our family and kids. Uh, we might have a farming partner or a business partner. And so with that thought in mind, our opening question this morning is, what are some of the partnerships that you have? And then the follow-up question is, how do you define a good partner? Well, our relationships define us as, as a person, right? And, and for Christians, our relationship with God through Jesus Christ is fundamental to our beings. And, and, and we are in this series on the words of life, and we're taking a careful look at the Ten Commandments, looking for those deeper meanings, not just as abstract do this, don't do that, laws, but, but the deeper meaning, what does God really desire for us? And I do believe that, that God does desire us to have a joyful, happy, constructive lifestyle. He, he does want us to, to enjoy life and be satisfied. And our relationships are vitally important to, to us to have those healthy lives. And when we think about all those partnerships that we have, Jesus is kind of like in the center of that. And today we're going to be look, talking about partnerships with, uh, uh, in relationship to the seventh commandment, which is do not commit adultery. All right, so you might say, well, okay, but what's adultery have to do with partnerships? Well, again, we're looking at the deeper meanings of the words of life. And so for today, let's, let's define adultery as being unfaithful in a relationship, right? So consider this. God desires an intimate relationship with us through his son Jesus. And so the first commandment amounts to uh, not, not having adultery against God. He, because the first commandment is, you shall have no other gods before me. God comes first. And so now we're at the seventh commandment and it can be seen as our relationship with other people with the marital relationship being the most intimate and most special of all those relationships other than our relationship with God. And so adultery in a marital relationship is generally thought as being unfaithful, whether it be in thought, word, or deed, it, you know. So consider this. I do believe that God does want for us to be happy and satisfied. And so consider the contrast between faithful and unfaithful. Now, one way to think about being unfaithful is to put our wants and needs before our partner's wants and needs, all right? Whether it be marital, business, uh, personal friendships, um, and it doesn't matter if it's for physical gratification or for emotional support or any one of, a, I guess, a million other reasons, and it amounts to we're putting ourselves first before our partnership, right? Whatever it is we want or need, we're putting that before our partner, and our partner then goes into second place. Now that's true whether we're talking about our spouse, our business partner, or even God, or our best friend. So another way to think of unfaithfulness is to consider our wants and needs before that of our partner. We're unfaithful to God when we put our desires ahead of Him. We are unfaithful to our spouse when we put our needs before Him or her. And it 
and again, it doesn't matter if it's physical, emotional, or perhaps just withholding attention, you know, um, withholding attention, time, precious time with a spouse or, or prayer with God, you know. It, and, and in some cases, it might be we don't want to make ourselves vulnerable. We don't want to expose ourselves to being hurt by someone else. And so we kind of hold ourselves back. Um, and another way to think about this is individualism. I, you know, I, I never thought about that, you know, th this whole thought about putting ourselves first. You know, you think thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay, well, that's that's a sexual thing with, with the, against your spouse. But... If you think of it in a broader, deeper sense, it is putting our wants, our needs ahead of a relationship, whatever it is. And that brings us up to our next discussion questions. Have you ever thought about that idea of individualism, take, taking our individual wants or needs and, and comparing that to being unfaithful? And then the next question is, have you seen either in your own relationships or uh, the relationships of others around you how unfaithfulness negatively impacts those relationships? Well, again, Jesus deeply desires that intimate relationship with us. And in the story in John chapter 4, we hear about the woman at the well. There is a woman who was hurting. She'd had multiple relationships, none of them very good, right? And so you could say that her relationships were in a mess. And Jesus offered her partnership in the form of living water. All right. And then in Colossians, we hear this. This comes to us from Colossians chapter 3, verse, starting at verse 12. As God's chosen ones, that would be us, holy and beloved, clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bear with one another and if anyone has a complaint with, against each other forgive each other just as God has forgiven us so we also must forgive and above all clothe ourselves with love which binds together everything in perfect harmony and let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts to which we are indeed called to his one body and be thankful well, in those words, Jesus is inviting us to be in relationship with him and enjoy that incredible peace in our hearts that comes from that relationship with Jesus. Now, one last comment, you know, um, sometimes we can think we're pretty clever. I mean, you know, and, and, and we can use just the right words and maneuver just right to get around the rules, right? We're, we're, we're going to pull a fast one, right? Well, Jesus is above word games. So hear these words. These words come to us from, from Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 27. You have heard that it, was, that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Folks, Jesus sees into our hearts, whether it's my heart or your heart. And, and he does desire that we live into these words of life. And so we have to be true in our thought lives to, to what Jesus has for us, these words of life, so that we can live life to the full, so that we don't have secrets in our hearts, so we're not trying to play this double game, this double, this, this double thing, right? So that we can have peace and joy in our hearts and have deep and satisfying relationships, not only with Jesus, but with those around us in peace and joy. And so now, let us consider these closing discussion questions. What next step can you take to be a better partner? Okay, with God, through Jesus Christ, or with others? God did give us the words of life, and Jesus brings them into focus. And relationships are fundamental for us to have healthy, joyful lives with God through Jesus Christ and with those around us. And now, for the prayer challenge. <clears throat> Spend that five minutes each day. You gotta stop the noise and kinda go to a quiet place and just think about your relationships with others. What is the one next step that you can take to be a better partner with 
pick one of those. And then think about your relationship with Jesus. What is that next step you could take to be a better partner with Jesus? And then thank God for his love for us and his words of life. And whatever you do, talk with God often.